Tom Nook has a pretty good thing going on with the Animal Crossing series. But you know what would help him to print even more money? If he took some notes from an extremely obscure DS game that dropped over a decade ago. I'm Rich Funky, this is a video, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most simultaneously obscure and great games of the Nintendo DS era, Magician's Quest Mysterious Times, alongside how it still stands out from Animal Crossing to this day with its own identity. I've always been a big fan of the Animal Crossing series, ever since I got my hands on Wild World on the DS. I'm still a fan of the series, and I enjoy the major terraforming and customization options that New Horizons brought to the table, but I think it's fair to say that Animal Crossing as a series has evolved slowly. On the other hand, we've got Magician's Quest. Published by Konami and released in November of 2008 in Japan, and May of 2009 in North America, this one didn't have much fanfare in terms of marketing. I honestly couldn't find much in terms of commercials or marketing material for the game, but it received mid-reviews from a few gaming publications, such as a 7.5 from IGN and 6 from Eurogamer. Many have written off the game as an Animal Crossing clone, and it's not hard to see the comparisons at all if you have a pair of working eyes. Now, I'm not going to say that Magician's Quest is the best thing ever made, but I do think there are a few elements in the game that are more ambitious than what Animal Crossing has to offer, and they deserve a thorough analysis. For starters, let's take a look at something Magician's Quest was somewhat ahead of the curve on. In Magician's Quest, your player is dropped into the Magic Academy in order to earn their Magician's License and earn the title of Master Wizard. Progress is measured in a 5-star system, much like Animal Crossing's Town Perfection score. However, this is where the quest part of the game really shines through. There are 150 potential characters in the game, and your choices in befriending, creating rivalries, or even dating will influence what quests are available to tackle towards becoming Master Wizard. This is a nice change of pace, as now your bonds with your fellow Magic Game pals contribute to the end goal of graduation, as opposed to Animal Crossing relying on town decorations for ratings. Now a lot of these quests are fetch quests, but Animal Crossing's gone down a similar path. At least in Magician's Quest, things tend to feel a bit more specialized with quests pertaining to fellow students' interests as opposed to the copy-paste feeling that often happens in Animal Crossing. Moreover, the social system of Magician's Quest is a lot more elaborate than Animal Crossing's ever was. And if anything, Nintendo dumbed down the socialization in New Horizons more than ever before. Dialogue in New Horizons is watered down to where there are barely any characters with rude personalities in the game. And at most you'll just upset a villager enough that they'll get around to leaving your town at some point. There's even a whole gossip system between the students at Magic Academy which reflects the actions the player has taken and the consequences of said actions, alongside rumors of drama between other characters and hints towards potential quests. It's not to quite to the level of something like the Persona series, but it is great to hear characters smack talk each other behind one another's backs. Furthermore, the spell system offered in Magician's Quest is really appealing to me. Spells like invisibility allow you to mess with other characters in the world, and there are utility spells for helping you do things like find buried treasure. Hell, there's even a fart spell. Now, I'm not saying that Animal Crossing should suddenly drop into the Harry Potter world, although who knows what dark arts Tom Nook gets into off camera, but it would be nice to have more fantastical elements in the series and more ways to interact with the world. There are so many other elements that just add up to such a charming gem of a game to me. One thing that stuck out to me was that you can rise above your corporate overlords and become one with the ability to run your own shop. There's also a crafting system, weighing in over a decade before New Horizons even got around to it. Overall, while there's a ton of overlapping elements with fishing, bug catching, flower gardening, and overall art style, there's a lot of standout features in Magician's Quest that make me really glad to have discovered this game later in life. While the series didn't get enough love 
for some Western ports, there were three sequels in Japan, two on the DS and one on the 3DS. The game seemed to have sold relatively well in Japan, so who knows. Maybe one day Nintendo will wake up and remember this little game series from over a decade ago. Who knows, it's Nintendo after all. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'm so hyped to see that we hit over 100 subs recently. I genuinely just want to say thank you to everyone who's taken a moment to click on my videos and check out my stuff. All of you are awesome, and I hope you